Johnson is Professor of Public Health and Medicine and Pharmacy at Morsani College of Medicine at the University of South Florida. Doctor, thank you so much for joining our program today. Good to be here. Thank you. Well, Doctor, I want to start with this number, this milestone, um, exceeding 100 million cases here in the U.S. What's your reaction to these stats? And I want to ask you also, how much can we rely on these numbers from the Hopkins website, given some people are using at-home tests more and more, and those cases may not be in the official record. So could there be more cases than this? Yes, Francis, that's exactly the case. From the beginning of this pandemic, being able to measure the number of cases has been a challenge because sometimes they've been confused with other diseases. There are different reporting requirements in each of the 50 states. We don't have a national reporting system. And since the last year or so, people have been using home testing. And some people aren't testing at all because they don't want to know. So the 100 million figure is the tip of the iceberg. It may not be a very deep iceberg, but it's a significant iceberg. The disease has become endemic which means it's become kind of part of the landscape of where we live. And we're living at a time right now where we've got the, the triple respiratory issues of RSV and flu and COVID. Uh, so the numbers are sometimes confusing because people aren't sure what they've got and reporting exactly what they do have is unclear, but it's significant. 100 million, 100, 100 million people have contracted the disease, but getting it as a disease is not the same as dying from it as a disease. Yeah, that's a good clarification to make, of course. Uh, Hendrick mentioned in that last report before you that um, despite this latest setback, the U.S. is actually in a much better place than it was a year ago. So that's some, a silver lining there. Can you expand on that? Absolutely. You know, we've only had the, the, the vaccines for a little over a year. We've learned an awful lot about how to manage and treat this disease that we just didn't know two and a half, three years ago when it began to infiltrate our culture and society. So we learn as we go, which is good science. And it's also good politics if you believe in it. Uh, so a year ago, we were still learning about the vaccines and how they affected the population. People were taking them and we were getting both the natural immunity from those individuals who contract the disease and the acquired immunity from those people who got the vaccine. We're now learning a number of things. The, the cases that we are having uh, that for people dying are among the most vulnerable, the very old people who are not vaccinated, the people who have multiple diseases and illnesses. The fact that people are getting sick and getting into hospitals is, an, is a concern that we have, but it's not as great as it was two years ago. We now know how to manage this disease, and it's a matter of fundamental public health right now, and that is monitoring, management, education, making sure communities understand what to do, and just common sense, Francis, which is where we really have to focus our attention right now. It was mentioned earlier as well that this long COVID or the post-infection chronic syndrome is something we all have to be concerned about for a long time. It's going to be around in our population for all age groups for maybe 10, 15, 20 years or longer. I want to squeeze in one last question. We only have a, a short time left, 30 seconds or so, but um, a lot of people are suffering from fatigue from this uh, pandemic. Some people are not getting their uh, booster shots. A lot of people in this country. How are how are how is that phenomenon going to affect numbers down the road as we battle this? Well, because the virus constantly mutates or variants, uh, we, we, people may need to get additional boosters, but they're tired of it. And some people are saying, you know, something. I've already had my shots. I'm prepared to get as sick as I might get, and then work through it. I think we still have a lot to learn and we're going to just watch the data, Francis, and see where it goes. People should just be attentive, exercise, degree of common sense. If you're in a crowded place and you don't know where you're at and you're with a lot of people you don't know, you might want to wear a mask or social distance because this disease is, is still pretty, pretty clever and it, var it variants and it, it mutates quickly and it changes. Uh, it may not kill people, but a lot of people are going to get sick. So just be careful out there, folks. Thank you so much for that reminder and that advice. Dr. Jay Wolfson, thanks for joining our program today. My pleasure. Be well.